everyone, and welcome back live here at the Guideville Insights Lounge. I'm Kate Warnock here on location at the Oliver Wyman Health Innovation Summit with another repeat guest, Lisa Soonan. Lisa, welcome back. Thank you. Good to be back. So, Lisa, you have a different title from the last time I we do. spoke to you. You are now the Senior Managing Director for GE Ventures. Correct. You're going to be on a panel today at yes. the summit with some really interesting folks, and I wanted to ask you your opinion about... Um, Thomas Getz, just, he's going to be a co-panelist, yes. and he just published an article not too long ago where he cautions entrepreneurs not to chase after every sexy new tech trend. So there's think AI, VR, mm -hmm. deep learning, that sort of thing. But does typical venture capital pay attention to those who stick with the less sexy services over software? Your opinion. Well, I think it depends on who you think is is typical venture capital. Okay. Um, and I think that you know the the folks that are coming into healthcare from the tech side, by and large, are often very swayed by the technology. Whereas I think many of the healthcare people recognize that technology without services to deliver those technologies in some form, ultimately rarely win. Right. You know, really the context of healthcare is services. And, 85% of the dollars are in services. Mm -hmm. And while many of the services are inefficient and can be transferred you know, into an online environment, they're still services in the end, and that you have to serve customers. Okay, makes sense, so. All right, you also are one of my favorite bloggers Thank out you. there. Thank you, so Venture Valkyrie. Venture Valkyrie, <laughs> you have to look it up. So, um, it actually, I think it was mentioned by Helen Lee this morning in her opening keynote that um, you blogged about the Alexa Diabetes Challenge, yeah, yeah. right? And it really, your blog really was more about the potential applications of voice technology in healthcare, mm -hmm. and it read more like a cautionary tale. Okay, while you while you recognized applications for voice interface, you were essentially thumbs down on this as a venture investing opportunity. What are the lessons you'd want an entrepreneur to take away? I think it somewhat relates to the first question you asked me. Okay. And, and it's not that I'm thumbs down on voice in healthcare. I'm thumbs up all the way on voice in yeah. healthcare. Um, and I think the the ease of use for consumers, particularly older consumers, but really all consumers. We want to communicate by voice. That's what we're accustomed to doing. Right. Um, is really good. My concern is that there are a few companies that are starting to be the voice front end, you know, for healthcare, trying to set themselves up as that. Mm -hmm. And largely, they are software development companies. They're consulting firms. They're not really whole products and, and capabilities mm -hmm. unto themselves. And I think we see in technology over time, when you have a feature that's the focus, it, it's hard to make a company of scale out of that. Sure. You really need to build it into a product and a service and, and have something that's useful in its own totality. So for me, while, while there's occasional exceptions to this rule uh, in tech, they rarely exist in healthcare. And I think you know my caution is not to get swayed by software companies that are voice, uh, I will turn your thing into voice. Right. I'd rather get swayed by the product itself. Right. Is it actually serving me? Right. Okay. All right. Fair enough. All right. The last round, and we, we had a reminder yeah. that your phone is here, but with reason, because um, when we last spoke, no, it's, it's good because I know you have a few statistics you're going to share with our audience. All right. So we last spoke with you in 2015 right. at the Olive Wyman Summit, and you marveled then at the number of health companies who didn't have women on their leader board mm -hmm. in leadership positions. Um, or even a product development team. So can these companies come close to personalizing a consumer approach if they don't have women or an even more diverse leader included? No, I think they can. I mean, I think fundamentally uh, we well know, everybody seems to know, that 85% of healthcare decisions are made by women. Right. Uh, women make up, if you look at the global healthcare workforce, women make up about 38% of that. Okay. But if you actually get to corporations that sell most of the healthcare, women make up very small numbers, you know, 5% of the boards, you know. In healthcare startups, uh, there's about 18% of the startup founder groups include women. By the time you get to Series B, it's down to 12%. Right. By the time you get further, it's, you know, right. orders on zero. Right. Uh, in the venture world, it's, you know, 7% of partners. Even in the doctor world, you know, doctor, female doctors make on average 25% less than male doctors in every single city in America. So it's a pretty big problem, and I yeah. think if you want to enfranchise the marketplace, particularly the purchasing marketplace, you have to build a diverse workforce to serve that need. And I, you know, I think it's really a challenge. You know, and I think too, that, you know, we can even take that higher and say, you know, the data sets that are going to be used to build the algorithms from which AI and all this machine learning, if that itself 
is not representative yeah. of the full population, your output is not going to be as effective. Well, well, AI starts with what's history, right? The data right. that's history. The data that's history is almost all about white men. And so you're going to get mistakes in right. you know, output and how to treat patients and diagnostics and treatment methodologies, et cetera, if you don't build in a broad right. variety of data into those things. We right. see it in clinical trials. Right, right. All right. Well, Lisa, it's always right. a delight to have you here with us in the Guybell Insights Lounge. So thank you for being here. My name is Kate Warnock. Please keep watching. We're going to be up with another interview soon.